right, students, today we're going to be looking at human inheritance. That is how specifically we as people have our genes operate and get our traits from our parents. So we're going to look at three patterns of human inheritance. The first one we have talked about already at quite a length, which is a single gene that has two alleles. And in this case, these two alleles are either dominant, such as a big A, or recessive, like a little a. This is the common one that we were looking at when we looked at pea plant size, where big T was dominant and it was tall, and little t was the recessive for the pea plant, and it was short. But in our case, we're going to be looking at human traits, so we're going to be looking at widow's peak. So widow's peak, if you have the big W, you have the peaks. If you have the little w, you have the smooth hairline. So there's only two ways that this inheritance pattern can work. You either have it one way or the other. No in-betweens. There's no half widow's peak from having this being heterozygous. This means you have the widow's peak as well as this. So we should already be pretty familiar with that one. So the second inheritance pattern is a single gene, which means you have one pair of alleles available, but it has multiple alleles. This example we looked at before in another organism was with chickens, where you could have feather black or feather white. That was the example in the book, but you could conceivably have feather red available or feather green. But remember that you can only have two of these alleles at a time. Even if there's 25 versions of this gene available, we can only have two at a time because we only have one gene, because this is a single gene. Now remember, we could have multiple co-dominant alleles, which means both traits can show, but also we can have a recessive in addition to all these co-dominants. And the recessive, you must have both alleles must have both of those alleles for the recessive trait to show. Our example for this is human blood type, where the I stands for something that really doesn't matter for the record. It's immunoglobulin, which is just the name of a chemical protein. We don't need to worry about that. But IA means you have this type A protein here. IB gives you the second protein, and these are co-dominant, so you can have the A and the B at the same time. There is a third allele in this type, because remember this is multiple alleles, and it is little i. The little i is recessive, so if either this co-dominant shows up or this co-dominant shows up, it's going to block the little i. If you get two little i's, however, you can have type O blood. Now, since type O blood is two recessives, it is least common. So this is two genes with multiple alleles. So for A blood, you could have IA, IA, or IA and a little i. This parent cannot have a child with O blood, but this parent, since they have the little i, could give this little i to a child. And if they get a second little i from the other parent, they will have O blood. But a person who has AB blood, it's a different situation because they have both of those alleles. So let's clear up here and look at AB real quick. So this would be a great test question to have. If you have IA, IB, this means you have AB blood, but your child could not have O blood because you're going to give your child either the A or the B. There is no way for this person to give their child a little I, so the child can never have O blood if either parent has AB. So that's important to remember. 
Now, as we move on to the third one, that's going to be multiple genes. Now, everything we've looked at so far has been a single gene at a time. But in this case, this is where we get large amounts of variation in our human populations because we can have an A, A, little b, little b, big C, big C, let's see, little d, little d, a big E, little e. So we can be homozygous for some traits, homozygous dominant for other traits, or heterozygous for some of these traits. So these all, all these together, could work for one trait. So this may contribute a little bit, this one may contribute a little bit, this one may contribute a little bit, this one and this one. So it's important to remember, this is many, many factors going into one trait, so we have a huge amount of variety. Good example of this is human height. If it was just one gene, then we would have people who are either tall or short. If it was one gene with codominant alleles, we might have tall, medium, or short. But we have a huge amount of variety in human height because we have all of these many genes all working at the same time. So that's important to remember. A second example of this is human skin color. Skin color has a huge amount of varieties all over the world, but they all come down to the same thing. Many, many, many genes all controlling the same trait at once. So this contributes to maybe one shade of your skin color. Little bees might contribute to another shade of your skin color. And just like an artist mixes paints on a palette, we mix up all the different color contributions of these separate genes, and that results in your final skin color. So there's a huge amount of variety in human skin color. If we laid out every person in the school, we'd find probably a different shade for almost every single one of you. So that is many genes. We gotta look at sex chromosomes now. This is what determines if you are a male or a female. It's pretty easy. It's the only pair of chromosomes that may not match. In girls, they have two X's, so this is a female. So they have a matched set. They got a full set of genes here and a full set of genes here. Guys, however, do not match. They have a small chromosome that we call the Y that makes you male, which means because of that, the X chromosome has no backup genes. So if you have damaged or recessive alleles on your X chromosome and you're a male, you have to show that. So we must show recessive traits on the X chromosome. Of course, remember this only applies to genes on the X chromosome, but if you've got a gene on your X chromosome and you're a guy, you're gonna have to show it because you have no backup gene. The example of this is color blindness. And what we call this is a sex-linked trait, which means it's related to whether you're a guy or a girl, how often you get it. So sex-linked is a very important term that we need to remember. Sex-linked traits. Color blindness is one, and we'll later learn of a sex-linked disorder, which is hemophilia. That'll be in our next video. So. XX makes a girl, XY makes a boy. So we know that the guy can give either his X or his Y to his child. So the male is the one who basically decides if the baby's gonna be a boy or a girl. If your baby gets an X sperm, it's gonna be a girl. If the baby gets the Y carrying sperm, it's gonna be a boy. So there's roughly a 50, 50 ch uh, percent chance. So if we do us a quick Punnett square, where here's mom, here's dad, we get a possible girl, another possible girl, a possible boy, and another possible boy. So, guys do not carry sex-linked traits. They cannot hide a sex-linked trait. So, they can give that trait to a girl, but the girl must get two recessive alleles for the sex-linked trait in order to give it to her child. So we look at color blindness. Color blindness being sex linked and recessive, we show a color blindness with an X little c. And we want to make our little c's extra little so we can see the difference. A normal 
is x big C, make it extra big. So when we do a Punnett square for this, we'll have, let's say dad is not colorblind, so we give dad x big C, making it extra big. Let's say that mom is a carrier, so she has an x big C, because she's not colorblind, and an x little c. Now the possibles for this is a girl with two x big c's, which means she has normal vision, a boy with an x big c y, which means he has normal vision, but then we have a carrier girl who has x big c, x little c, and a one in four chance of having a colorblind boy because this boy got the one allele from mom over here because she was a carrier that made him colorblind. Now, mothers typically are carriers. Guys will be showing the trait. So in order to have a colorblind girl, mom has to at least be a carrier, and dad would have to be colorblind to make a girl down here be colorblind as well. So dad has to be colorblind, and mom has to at least be a carrier to make a colorblind girl. So that's just a quick run through uh, inheritance of colorblindness. Last thing for this section is infect, effects of the environment, and that is extremely important because your genetics is basically the map for how you're going to be made, but all kind of things can happen to you on the way. So your nutrition, if you only eat macaroni and cheese from age 2 to about age 24, even if you have genes that say you're going to be 6 foot 2, you are not going to be that tall because you need complete healthy nutrition to reach your full height. You could also get an injury, which is an environmental effect, which could affect the way you look or how tall you are. You could get very sick, which could affect your brain. It could cause blindness. You could have genes for normal vision, but if you get a very, very bad finger, uh, fever, sorry, young in life, you could end up losing your sight or your hearing which you may have had good genes for that, but an outside effect, such as an illness and a high fever, could change the way you turn out. So another thing to talk about is if you're going to be a sports person, practice and training. Even if you have Lance Armstrong's genes for his fast twitch muscles, which we know gives him a distinct advantage over people without those alleles, if you sat on your couch eating potato chips for the last couple years and not trained, you will not be as fast as your full potential. Even if you have a genetic advantage, what you do in life will have a major, major effect on that. What happens to you in life will have a major, major effect on your final phenotype. So that's a good reason to make sure you stay healthy, eat right, exercise, and if you intend to be an athlete or something like that, you should make sure that your environment suits your goals so you get the best of your genes and the best you can from your environment. Because genes, not all, but some are affected by the environment. We won't see an environmental effect that changes the color of my eyes, but we will see an environmental effect that changes the color of my skin when I get too much sun and I get a tan. I didn't inherit that tan. It was an environmental effect working with my genes to make me darker. So that's the end of section one. So make sure you remember about the inheritance of colorblindness. Make sure you know those three inheritance patterns and the examples in humans of when they work. And make sure you understand about the effects of environment. So sex leak genes, the three inheritance patterns, the effect of environment, and of course remember that guy ends in Y, so he has the Y chromosome. So I'm going to stop there and we'll continue in a second with section two on human genetic disorders.